Welcome back. It is Monday, February 12th in the NBA. And my three favorite picks are on the way. What's going on, everyone? It's Logan from Calling Our Shot. Back again with some more NBA picks. If you're you know new new to this uh, channel and you're like, where's Austin? I, I, I expected the other guy. Again, Austin is still on his honeymoon. I'm still holding down the fort. And unfortunately, on, on Saturday, we didn't have any picks on Sunday, Super Bowl Sunday. I hope you guys enjoyed that game. I know I, I definitely did. We didn't have any NBA picks, so we have to go back to Saturday to talk about how we do it. And unfortunately, the winning streak came to an end. I mean, with only three picks, though, it wasn't a catastrophic day, right? You know, that's kind of why, especially pre-All-Star break, I've been kind of dialing it back to three picks. So, again, we just have three on the card. But let's talk about Saturday because it was kind of a frustrating uh, day. Pistons team total under. That one came through. It was a massive sweat, but, you know, it, 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 it did hit nonetheless. We're undefeated quietly on, on spread slash totals on this channel. Can we continue it today? I do have another uh, money line pick that I do like in that one. But we also have Ben Carroll points. I should have went with Franz Wagner. I mean, it was still the, the Franz show, whatever. I mean, <laughs> Ben Carroll didn't need to score. And then you got, and then we had Kuzma points, which was very, very frustrating. If you're watching that game, Kuzma, legit no show first half. Second half, he he turned it on, finished a basket short. You just hate to see that, you know, but betting on volatile guys like that, sometimes it does happen. But is that going to deter us? Absolutely not. We're going to get into the picks this week uh, and, and we're going to start, you know, a new winning streak. All all winning streaks until Austin can return from his honeymoon uh, post All-Star break. But let's start with a player prop that I do really like. And it's going to be Darius Garland of the Cavs. I like his over 15 and a half points, minus 113 odds on FanDuel, currently your best value there. Now, I say FanDuel because if you're looking at other books, he doesn't actually have a line on, on most books. He will most likely get a line. If, I'd be kind of shocked if he doesn't get a line. But I would consider playing this up to 16 and a half. A lot of people ask, you know, where should I play this when my book finally does release a line? He's more of an all or nothing type guy. And I think really when, if he's going to go over, he's going to go over by a, a decent margin and and not just like on the hook at, at 16. I mean, if he ends on the hook at 16, you can come back and uh, shout angry comments at me. You know, Logan, I, I trusted you. You failed me. I'm sorry. But we are trusting Darius Garland today. And I considered the points plus assist line, but I like to personally keep it simple and just stick with one stat category. Austin and I kind of defer on that, that method. He likes taking points plus assists, PRAs. He likes doing all that. I like sticking to just points because I know, you know, sometimes rebounds and sometimes assists can be scored in wonky ways. You can't score a point in, in a wonky way. It either goes in the basket or it doesn't. If you look at their most recent, you know, November matchup when Garland faced the 76ers, he went for 32 points. You know what? There, there was a key missing player in that one, Logan. You know, Donovan Mitchell didn't even play in that game. Yes, I know Donovan Mitchell didn't play in that game, but there's still reason for me to believe that Darius Garland uh, can still hit this over. Just all he needs is actually half of what he what he had in that game uh, without Donovan Mitchell. You look at the point guards who've played Philly in their last four games. This is really why I'm on this prop, right? Like the eyeball test and the numbers do not lie. You had Tyus Jones in the most recent game. He went for 25. Trey Young, obviously 37. That was insane. They could not guard him at all. Steph Curry only had nine points, which I actually consider the statistical anomaly. But if you know how Nick Nurse plays defense, they weren't letting uh, Steph Curry beat him. It was just anybody but Curry, and that's exactly what happened in that game. And then you had Kyrie Irving with 23. So you look at those. You, you look at those last four four uh, games. You know, with the point guard position, they're giving up some some major points to there. And this 76ers defense obviously isn't the same without Embiid, and the help defense on ball just looks really bad the last few games. That's why I'm targeting the point guard position because this is a guy with the ball in his hands. He's the playmaker. And I think Darius Garland is, is definitely in line for a good game today. You look at Darius Garland, he averages 19.3 points per game at home this season compared to only 17.7 on the road. So, you know, he's he's slightly higher, obviously performing at home. And that's, that's where they find themselves today. If Nick Nurse wants to concentrate defensive attention on Donovan Mitchell, I, I certainly welcome it because then that that leaves, you know, plenty of, of shot opportunities and, and offense for guys like Darius Garland or even some of the big men, which the big men will probably be popular plays. I've already looked at Twitter. I've seen people on the big men. That's fine. I just want to kind of go against the grain and I want to take Darius Garland because the point guards have been performing well against Philly recently. I also like betting player props at buy low spots. In, these day, in this day and age of the NBA, so many of these lines just feel way too inflated. And you're like, oh, man, I have to go, you know, fishing up at, you know, 27, 28 points. This is a buy low spot for Darius Garland because he's actually under this line in six straight games. 
So you you look you look at this opportunity. I I just think as ten point favorites, yes, this game could eventually turn into a blowout, but the scoring will have to come first before it turns into a blowout. And I think it's going to be from guys like Darius Garland that contribute a lot, and and maybe this game gets out of hand late, but the damage will already be done. And I and I think you know if you're if we're looking at at the point guard position, so it's a, it's a position Philly has definitely struggled against recently. I think Darius Garland's in line for for a good game this this game. And again, if you don't have this line, just be patient. Your book will probably come out with it uh, in a minute. But let's go into our second play. It's it's a spread slash money line. You know, obviously you could take the spread, but I'm taking the Milwaukee Bucks on the money line plus 100 odds on FanDuel. Currently your best value there. Yes, quietly we have been you know undefeated on on spreads on my in my little uh, time on this show. But I really do think this is a good spot. We're getting plus value, you know, with with the Milwaukee Bucks at home. The Nuggets obviously beat the Bucks 113-107 back in January in their in their most recent matchup. But I'm predicting the Bucks get their revenge at home today. This is the only sec the, this is only the second time this year that the Bucks find themselves as home underdogs, which I, it's a rare spot for them. And that's kind of where I want them too. I, I do not want to be laying points with this Milwaukee Bucks team. I want them to be in the underdog role as an away favorite too. The Nuggets seven and thir- seven thirteen and one ATS, just covering in thirty five percent of those games. We faded the Nuggets, you know, in their most recent game in Sacramento, and I was like, this is just uh, that was a bad spot because it was a back to back. But this is still a bad spot for them, in my opinion, because they just don't play as well on the road. They're just ten and seventeen. 10, 17, and 1 ATS on the road this year. This, so you you would be profitable fading the Nuggets ATS on the road, and that's what we're doing uh, in, in this one. Let's talk about this Milwaukee Bucks team because obviously you, you know, you've got Doc Rivers, super controversial. Everyone's like, oh, this guy, this guy is not the, not the coach we, we want leading the helm. But I do like the addition quietly of Patrick Beverly. I, I do like you know someone who cares about defense, who can be a rah-rah type guy and you know get them fired up. Because this Milwaukee team has just, you know, they've been a sieve on defense for a lot of the year. Let's go back to their their most recent matchup, though. The the stats, if you were looking just box score side to side, they were pretty even. The Nuggets just shot a little bit better, 48% compared to Milwaukee's 43% at home, and they pulled away in that one, 113 uh, to 107. If you're looking at this one, I'm expecting a good game from the Bucks role players like Crowder, like Beasley, because you know what? In the NBA, a, a lot of times those role players do step up, uh, you know, at home and, and they they might shrink a little bit on the road. I think guys like that are, are sort of the difference today. Also, you know, a guy a guy named Giannis. Giannis averages 31 against Denver over the last two seasons. I don't see really them being able to get in his way and defend Giannis. I think he'll, he's once again in line for a pretty good day today. If you're looking at the injury report to this one, some just something quickly to talk about. Middleton is out. Giannis and Dame are both game time decisions, but I personally would be, you know, I, I'd be shocked if if neither of them played. Because I just think I think this is a game that Milwaukee needs. Beating Denver would be the momentum this team needs. I think they're finally going to you know turn it around. They've been you know really shaky as as of late. And I, and I think that that game most recently against the Hornets, they you know they were they were high fiving and 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 uh, you know get, getting getting uh, that was a good momentum boost. But beating a team like Denver at home is kind of what you need to springboard your season. And I and I think Milwaukee's going to you know be on the prowl today. I think you know we we see big games from Giannis, Dame, and the role players. I think there's value on on Milwaukee on the money line. You know, a team that that not a lot of people want to really back this time, but. I'm getting plus value on the money line. I'm going to go ahead and take a shot on that. Now, that leads to my last pick of the day. Another player prop. James Harden, under 16 and a half points, minus 110 odds on BetMGM. I'm fading the beard on this one. You know, if, if you look at if you look at this matchup, I just don't think it's going to lend a lot of points for him. On January 14th, Harden only had 14 points on 4-14 shooting and 2 for 9 from 3. Look, Prior to last game against Detroit, Harden was smoking this line, easily clearing this line in the previous three games. I'm sensing kind of a turning point, though, because the main reason Harden was soaring over this line was he was hot from the three-point range. Today, Harden actually has a tough matchup against the Wolves, who are great at defending the guard position. Minnesota allows the second fewest threes uh, to point guards and fourth fewest threes to shooting guard position. So even if you know Harden, you know whatever he wants to be in the one or two position. It doesn't really matter. Minnesota is really good at defending, you know, guards, you know, against the three pointer and Minnesota's perimeter defense should keep him in check because in his hot streak, he was hitting five plus threes in, in those games. 
And honestly, he's a guy, he's a three, three uh, ball type dependent player. And I, I like fading those types of guys because if they're not hot, then they're cold. And if they're cold, then normally they're not hovering around their line. Normally he, he's going to have to get it done with a lot of twos. If his, if his obviously his three pointer isn't falling, if you look at his, his three point made line, it's two and a half today at, at even odds. In my opinion, if you wanted to say, Logan, you're absolutely out of your mind. The beard's going to feast today. Well then go bet. I would personally go bet his three point line. Cause I don't th- see him getting this, this line. If it's not done with, with threes, if he's just raining threes on me and making me look like an idiot, fine. I'll tip my cap, whatever. But I think Minnesota will be tough, you know, on the perimeter. And with a total set only at two two twenty two and a half, the books are expecting another close defensive battle similar to the January matchup. I'll take my chances, you know, fading the beard in this one. I think Minnesota is going to be able to defend him, especially for making the three. If he gets gets it done with a bunch of twos, then you could just throw my whole analysis out the window. But I really do think, uh, you know, Harden, Harden is, is going to struggle today. And I think he stays under that 16 and a half point uh, line. I, I just think this is, this is a really good matchup to fade the beard. So that'll do it for the picks. Let's quickly talk about what we had. We had Garland. Uh, over in points, we had the Milwaukee Bucks on the money line, and we had James Harden under 16 and a half points. Thank you guys so much again for watching this video and supporting uh, me while while Austin's away. Hopefully, we could bring out the brooms and get a three and zero sweep. I would absolutely love that. But we're gonna start the the week off with some winners. This has been Logan from Calling Our Shot. See you guys tomorrow. <laughs>